Hi there. This short video is going to walk us through the Tag Search QRadar playbook with components. This playbook is triggered by a tag. We can see this here based on an address within the Acme Corporation where a tag has been applied where the tag is equal to Q search. Two processes are then carried out. The first is to remove the existing tag. So we simply delete the QSearch tag. The second is to define the search parameters. Here we have two different search parameters. One that's going to provide us with a statistical count of events and the second that's going to retrieve events over a defined time period. With both of these, we are using variable substitution. So we have the trigger TC address received from the address trigger. The variables themselves are using Arial query language. For these search parameters, we are linked to two components. One, for QRadar count events and the second for QRadar events themselves. And you'll notice with each one of these that we ask questions of whether there are events or results and if there are we're going to create some metrics, add a new data tag, merge the results and finally we're going to create an attribute. Components are reusable code within the playbook orchestration capability. Here, what we're passing on to the QRadar count events is the count event variable. That variable is output from the variables we created in the search parameters. At the same time, we are passing the second variable, retrieve events, again from the search parameters that we created into the QRadar events component. Then we are using the event query which is a if-else operator to look at the results from the QRadar count event and to determine if it's greater than or equal to 1 then we will move on. For the QRadar events if the result is not a null, therefore it exists, then we are going to move on. From the top process, we are going to create metrics. Here I've stored them in a metric called Ralphie Q Radar. We are then going to create tags. So we're going to create a Q Radar event tag and assign it to the originating entry point. Then we are going to merge the results from both components so that I have the QRadar source results with the number of events and then I'm going to extract the top five events from the QRadar events and store those in the platform as an attribute. Finally we take the output from the merge results that we've just created and we store that as a new attribute under the additional analysis and context. Here we have the first of the two components. This is the QRadar events component. Here we are taking the search query that has been passed on from the playbook. We're accepting that as a name called TC entity and we're actually going to be outputting the results so we're going to be feeding results back from this component to be used in the originating playbook. Here we have used URL encoding for the aerial query based on the data from the playbook and then we are building our search. So we are taking the encoded URL output using variable substitution for our 
key radar location and then the query expression prefix. We post this in as a job with the relevant headers and most importantly the authorization token. Not forgetting that we need to make sure there is some data in the body otherwise it will error. Then we are using JSON notation to extract the search ID. We are then delaying 10 seconds, allow the search to complete, and then we go back and check if it's complete. So again, we're using the same header entries. We are using the output from our extract search ID. And then we're asking the question about is it completed? So if the output contains the word completed, then we will merge the results from these two paths and move on. But if it's not complete, then we will add a second delay. Then we will merge the results and then we will gather those results together. So here we have gone to the same Q radar, the same prefix, this time with the search ID, and we've asked for the results. From the results, we're able to extract information. So we're creating a tuple based on the first five events. And we want to include the start time, the source IP, the source port, the destination IP, and the destination port. The output, the tuple, is then used in a conversion program. So we just take that from an array into a string and if there are results, then we are going to call another component, which is the convert markdown. Here we are taking the string and we are passing it into this new component. Of course, if there are no results, we follow the orange line and we're simply saying there are no results. We merge those together and send them back. So let's have a look at that markdown. Now that markdown is being used by multiple systems, so we can't turn that off just yet. But we have a component trigger. We are then adding line breaks, converting to multiple lines, then we're converting it to markdown, carrying out a cleanup and removing an object identifier and feeding the results back. The second path is counting the events themselves. Here, very similar methodology where we are encoding the query. We are extracting the results and the search ID and waiting for it to complete. The difference here is that when we get the results, we are simply interested in the result count. So we are looking for the first event count entry. We convert that to a number, and if there are results, we pass them on the blue path, and if there are no results, we set them to zero. And we pass the components back. If we turn all of these components on, and now if we open up an address that we want to query. So we'll browse for an indicator. We're only interested in addresses. And we're only interested in our organization for the purpose of this demonstration. So the playbook is activated by using a tag of QSearch. When it finds events, it will replace the tag with QRadar event. And what it will do is it will build this additional analysis and context. We can see here the information from the QRadar search. 
and the information from the QRadar events components. Here we can see that this information is in Markdown. We can remove this data and we can see this in action live. So we'll remove all of the tags, put in our new tag, QSearch, There is a delay while the queries are run. We have those 10 second delays deliberately to give QRadar a chance to send us the results. And then we can go ahead and refresh the page. So we already have the QRadar event tag. And now we have that new additional analysis and context. I know that there are six events in the last seven days and these are the top five events based on the source IP address, the source port, the destination IP address, the destination port, and epoch start, start time. Here we can see the steps that have been executed. So we had the address trigger, we had search parameters, we removed tags, we called a component which carried out the URL encoding. We extracted the results, merged them. We also ran a second component, the count events, extracted the results. And then at the bottom, we then merged the results together and were able to create the attribute. At each stage throughout this process, we are able to view detailed information because we have this in trace mode so we can see the trigger and the outputs. So we can see the available information from the trigger that we could have used further down in the playbook all the way down to the component level themselves. So we have inputs, there we have our aerial query and we have the outputs which is the result coming after markdown. And we could also look a little bit further down. We can look at the results. We can see how the results looked in the first place. And then what they look like when we receive them, we sent them into our markdown. And when they came out of markdown, we can see the format has changed.